The Flower. These are some words of John Maine. The wonderful beauty of prayer is that the opening of our heart is as natural as the opening of a flower. To let a flower open and bloom, it is only necessary to let it be. So if we simply are, if we become and remain still and silent, our heart cannot but be open, the spirit cannot but pour through into our whole being. It is this we have been created for. I wonder if as you hear those words, you have a sense of relief that prayer no longer seems to be about striving, asking. There's no strain. You're not trying to make anything happen. It's about allowing something to happen. And that allowing is very much a theme of John Maine's thought. He says, the first step in conversion is allowing ourselves to be loved. The first step in personhood is allowing ourselves to be loved. The first step in loving God is allowing ourselves to be loved. And maybe that's one of the reasons so many people find that being in the natural world is one of the ways that they find something of God. That the natural world speaks to them of God in some particular way. You can see a tree on a hillside constantly buffeted by the wind leaning over. It's had a hard life but it has its own beauty. You can see where a branch has been ripped from a tree, but the wound has healed over and it's become part of the beauty of that particular individual tree. You can see flowers that have been grown on good soil in ideal conditions who've come to a particular full glory but you can see other flowers, maybe the same sort of flower, where the seeds have landed on much poorer soil, not receiving the best conditions. But they still grow into something which is beautiful in its own way. So when we're in nature, we see that things are as they are. And in that being as they are, they have their own particular beauty. They can't analyse themselves, they can't feel pride or shame. They don't have to apologise for themselves, they simply are. And I think it's in that way that they can speak so much to us of God. The cloud of unknowing from the 14th century says, if you wanted one word to describe God, isness would be that word. God simply is. But as human beings, we have to learn to be ourselves. It doesn't come naturally to us. By the time we've reached adolescence even, and certainly adulthood, we have gathered all sorts of habits of thought and ways of surviving which have made life complicated and less than satisfactory and less than natural in a way for us. We've learned to compare and to compete. We've learned what it means to feel pride and to feel shame or guilt. We've learned to strive. We've learned to be constantly rating ourselves and evaluating ourselves and the success or failure of our strivings We've learned to blame others or to justify ourselves. And we've learned to want to be someone else, to be something that we're not. We've learned that life is not always happy, that life isn't always, if ever, entirely satisfactory. But then maybe a moment of grace comes a moment of awakening. 
we realize more clearly that we're not satisfied and we become dissatisfied with our lack of satisfaction. We're no longer content to live in that sort of way. And we come to meditation, come to this simple practice where we simply are in the presence of God who simply is. We set aside all our thought and feeling. And as we continue with the practice, we begin to unlearn some of those habits of thought and feeling and those ways of surviving. And in particular, we begin to unlearn our habit of striving. We begin to realize that meditation isn't about trying to make anything happen. Indeed, it isn't about trying to do anything out of our own effort and our own strength at all. It's about allowing the dynamic, life-giving energy of the spirit to be more and more the life-giving, healing energy within us. This is the way the Indian poet Rabindranath Tagore puts it. No, it is not yours to open buds into blossoms. Shake the bud, strike it. It is beyond your power to make it blossom. Your touch soils it, you tear its petals to pieces and strew them in the dust. But no colours appear and no perfume. Ah, it is not for you to open the bud into blossom. He who can open the bud does it so simply. He gives it a glance and the life sap stirs through its veins. At his breath the flower spreads its wings and flutters in the wind. Colours flush out like heart lungs. The perfume betrays a sweet secret. He who can open the bud does it so simply. <laughs>